from this our This is Rabbi Sussman speaking. Shalom, shalom, bien, shalom. Peace, peace, proclaimed all over, yet there is no peace. I want to thank everyone for coming to show their solidarity and their concern Hi, this evening. It is so important that you come here to show where we are as a community. And I think we in the Jewish community are very grateful for, is that better? Okay, we are very grateful for your support. 11 people murdered in, oh, that's better, 11 people murdered in Pittsburgh. If we look at the long history of the American Jewish community going back close to over 360 years, I marked, this, this is the is first time rabbi, something rabbi of this Sussman. magnitude has happened. And we feel our sense of ease and our sense of security shattered. And we wonder, is this the beginning of us living the faith and the lives of Jewish communities around the world for thousands of years, which periodically experience murder and massacre and persecution? No. No. We hope that this is not the beginning and that your presence here, that's something that very much encourages us by you being here we feel that we are not alone that we are surrounded by a community that cares and your being here is a statement not only of support in this tragedy but a statement against all expressions of hatred religious hatred and racial hatred and Anti-Semitism has existed so long, but somehow we've not thought of it and not focused on it enough. Of all the religious hate crimes in the United States, according to government statistics, 54% were various kinds of attacks on Jews, who make up only a little over 2% of the population of this country. And that itself is an astounding statement. And now that our eyes are open, it's time for us to see what we could do to combat this poison. We know what can happen and we know what did happen 70 odd years ago in Europe and really hey, to a lesser you, degree brother. over all of the centuries. And again, we hope and we pray that this poison will not come here. And we are so grateful for the support of all the members of the community of different faith groups and ethnic groups and racial groups. Today we are all together emphasizing love and peace and the ability to get along well and to support each other though we may have our differences. I'd like to chant a psalm, and this is Psalm 130, which we chant and which we say at, particularly at occasions like this. I'll chant it in English and in Hebrew. Shir HaMalot Mimamakim Karati Adonai Adonai Shema Bekoli Tien Aznecha Kashuvot Lechol Tachanunai Im Avonot Ishmaya Adonai Miyamot Ki Imcha Haslicha Leman Tivarei Ki Viti Adonai Kifta nafshi v'lidvaro ho'chauti Nafshi l'adonai Mi shomrim l'aboker Shomrim l'aboker Yachel Yisroel el adonai 
כי מאדוני החסד והרבה עמו פדות והוא יפדה את ישראל מכל עוונותיו. O pilgrim song, out of the depths I call to thee, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let thy ears be attentive to our supplicating voice. If thou, O Lord, should keep strict account of iniquities, O Lord, who can live on? But with thee there is forgiveness. that thou mayest be revered. I look for the Lord, my whole being thirsts for the Lord. My whole being hopes I wait for his word. My soul waits for the Lord more eagerly than watchmen for the dawn, than watchmen for the dawn. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is kindness, with him there is saving power. It is he who will redeem us from all our iniquities. Today, we think mostly of those individuals whose lives were cut short, whose lives were cut short so cruelly at a Sabbath service, a time of repose and a time of joy, a time of security, and a baby was being named while all of this was going on. A contrast, the beauty and the peace of what was going on in the synagogue to what occurred. And so I'd like us to read the names of those whose lives were lost. Joyce Feinberg, 75, of Oakland. Richard Gottfried, 65, of Ross Township. Rose Malinger, 97, of Squirrel Hill. Jerry Rabinowitz, 66, of Edgewood. Cecil Rosenthal, 59, of Squirrel Hill, and his brother, David Rosenthal, 54, of Squirrel Hill. Bernice Simon, 84, of Wilkinsburg, and her husband, Sylvan Simon, 86, of Wilkinsburg. Daniel Stein, 71, of Squirrel Hill. Melvin Wax, 88, of Squirrel Hill. And Irvin Younger, 69 of Mount Washington. May their memories be for a blessing. Amen. The memorial prayer, the El Malay Rachamim. El Malay Rachamim, Shochein Bam Romim, Hametse Menuchanachona Tachakan Feashina. במעלות קדושים וטהורים כזוהר הרקיע מזהירים את נשמת כל אלה שנרצחו על ידי האכזר שהלכה לעולמם בעבור שאנו נודרים צדקה פר השכרת נשמתם בגן עדן תהי מנוחתם, לכן בעל הרחמים יסתירם, וסתר כנפיך לעולמים, ויצרו בצרור החיים את נשמותם, אדוני הוא נחלתם, וינוחו מזכותם בשלום. ונאמר אמן. Grant perfect repose to the souls of all those who were so cruelly murdered for their 
faith and who have passed on to their eternal habitations. May they be under thy divine wings among the holy and pure who shine as bright as the skies. May their places of rest be in paradise. Merciful one, O oh, keep their souls forever alive under thy protective wings. The Lord being their heritage, may they rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. 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 Uh, now there's a, a song from the Hasidic tradition that maybe you could uh, sing along. And it goes, the whole world is a narrow bridge. And the main point is not to fear. Uh, I'll sing it in the Hebrew, maybe you could join along if you'd like. Kol ha'olam kulo gesher tsar me'od, gesher tsar me'od, gesher tsar me'od. Kol ha'olam kulo gesher tsar me'od, gesher tsar me'od. Gesher Tsar Meod Ve-ha-i-kar Ve-ha-i-kar Lo-le-fa-ched Lo-le-fa-ched Klal Ve-ha-i-kar Ve-ha-i-kar lo le Once again, I'd like to thank everyone coming here, Christian, clergy, Muslim, clergy, representatives of the Jewish community from many of our congregations. And thank you for your support and for your respect and for your love. I'm Reverend Karen Jackson, representing the Staten Island Interreligious Leadership Coalition, alongside the hosts of this candlelight vigil, the Staten Island JCC, Project Hospitality, and Communities United for Respect and Trust. And we are gathered here together now because our hearts are broken. Our hearts are utterly broken because of yet another hate crime Yet another mass shooting, this time targeted at our Jewish brothers and sisters in a community not very far from our own. Our hearts are broken for our Jewish neighbors in Pittsburgh and across our country and here Temple in Emmanuel, Staten Island who live in fear. Our hearts are broken because this mass shooting was the most devastating act of violence against Jewish people to have ever occurred in our nation. Our hearts are broken because our neighbors who survived the Holocaust were killed in our own nation. Our hearts are broken today and so we are here to be with one another, to take comfort from one another. And it's easy when our hearts are filled with this kind of despair to isolate ourselves, to be paralyzed into inaction. But that is not what we will do. We will continue to show up for one another, to comfort with one another, to grieve with one another and for those lives that were taken, to act with one another again and again for the way of love, the way of peace. Because hatred will not have the final word. Love wins. Love wins. I'd like to invite forward Father Hernan of Mount Carmel Roman Catholic Church, who will share with us a prayer prepared for this occasion by Bishop John O'Hara. Amen, David.
Bishop of Hera is uh, one of the auxiliary bishops here in New York City. O God of light and love, we come before you tonight in sorrow as we mourn the loss of those who, whose lives were taken by a deranged act of gun violence yesterday during Shabbat services in Pittsburgh. We grieve for them. Each one created in your own image and likeness, sacrificed by your hand and gifted with unique talents and abilities. Persons much loved, but their families, friends, co-workers, most of all by you. In this moment of sorrow and darkness, may the power of your lost love raise them to uh, life and hold them close to your heart of love. Since I lead uh, an immigrant con uh, congregation here in Staten Island, mostly of immigrants uh, from Mexico, people who are suffering and struggling, I will say it few words in Spanish as well, since we invited them. Dios de la vida, Dios del amor, estamos aquí doloridos y estamos aquí aconcojados y estamos para decirles a nuestros hermanos judíos que estamos con ellos en este momento de dolor, de sufrimiento, de vergüenza por el odio despertado en contra de esa comunidad hermana nuestra mayor en la fe. Te pedimos que cese el odio y que viva la, la paz y el amor que tú nos has dado desde la creación, porque nos has hecho hombres y mujeres a tu imagen para respetarnos, para amarnos, para recibirnos y no para odiarnos. Que cese la violencia, que cese la represión y que viva el Dios de la vida, de la paz y que la paz eh, les sea concedida a nuestros hermanos que han muerto de esta manera tan violenta. Que el Dios de la paz esté con nosotros. I invite forward now Reverend Janet Jones of Rossville AME Zion Church and also representing the Staten Island Council of Churches. Let us pray. Oh God, where else can we turn? To whom can we turn in times like this but to you, oh God? And for that, we say thank you. The psalmist declares that you are close to the brokenhearted and you save those who are crushed in spirit. We gather tonight brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. And yet we gather knowing that you are still God. You are still the one from whom we can seek comfort for the grieving, assurance for the uncertain, courage for the fearful, hope for the discouraged. We gather tonight, dear God, to hold each other in our shared pain and profound sadness. We gather and embrace one another and pray to you that our anger will be purposeful and that out of the ashes of senseless violence, death and destruction and hatred will arise a renewed resolve, a renewed determination to unite in our common humanity under the banner of love and peace and justice, Jew and Gentile, black, brown and white, young and old, rich and poor, to work for the good and safety of us all. Most of all, O oh holy God, we gather facing the reality 
that only you can change the human heart. Yes. As you said through the prophet Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God, all we can do is trust in you right now. To move in our hearts that we will gather as people of this nation, sick and tired of that which makes us sick and tired. And we will gather in oneness and in unity to take the steps that we can take to bring about the changes we need in this nation. So we turn to you, O oh God, in our grief, in our common shared grief and sadness. For it is only in you that we can hope for a better future. It's only in you that we can find the courage to speak up, to step out, to call out the inadequacies of our society and to work together to make it better. Hear our prayer tonight, oh God, as we say amen. 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 Also representing the Staten Island Council of Churches, Reverend Kathleen Barrett Lane. <clears throat> We've once again seen evil raise its ugly head to kill innocent lives in a house of worship, a place that should be a safe haven, a place of peace, a place of comfort and refuge, has once again become a place where innocent blood is shed through a single act of violence. Love you, Dave. Who can we blame besides the obvious? Well, let us look to ourselves and look at what we can do to not just stop but prevent the evil toxicity of hatred from spreading into the lives of the people we live with, work with, and interact with. Let us take personal accountability to make sure we are spreading messages of love and peace wherever we go. A life is a life, and any life taken unjustly, innocently taken is no justification at all. We scream loud about the life of the unborn and let us scream just as loud about the lives that are killed, innocent lives that are taken. And as we look to ourselves, may we pray this prayer, Father, forgive us. To offer words of consolation, Imam Tahir Kukai of the Albanian Islamic Cultural Center. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, may God peace and blessings be upon all you here. 
We pray to Almighty God to shower with his mercy those 11 innocent souls that were taken in the most sacred place where people worship Almighty. Sometimes events are much bigger than the words someone can say. In a Holy Bible, it says somewhere, I'm not very familiar with exactly where, but it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. What we say as human being, as the leaders have been elected, it matters. When we talk hate, we receive dead people. When we talk about racism, we've seen people beaten, killed, it matters. Today or yesterday, those that were killed, our brothers, are, were Jews. Could be very easy in the mosque, in a church, like uh, uh, brothers last year in an African-American church, they were killed nine people, they were worshiping. And when we go to the synagogue or mosque or church, that's the area that we feel the most safe. So when we don't feel safety in these safe havens, I don't know where we're going to be feel, feeling that we are safe. So what we say, it matters. Lives of people, they can count on that. Please, those they are seeking for the office, pay attention to what you say to your congregants. We have leaders, we have leaders that they, they don't pay attention to what they say. And innocent people, they get killed. I would like to say a short prayer that we Muslims say every day. We pray for us and we, we pray for everybody. Five daily prayers that we Muslims offer, we say this prayer, it has to do with peace and serenity. Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, wa ilayka yarja'u salam, ihyina bi salam, wa amitna bi salam, wa adkhilna al jannata bi salam. Almighty God, your peace, your source of peace, so, peace belongs to you. Enable us to live in peace. And when the time comes to die in peace, not to be killed. And bring us back in life so we can enter in your heaven in peace. May Almighty God bless you all. May this be the last time we mourn and we enjoy our lives in this beautiful country of ours. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Amen. Rabbi Ben Aaron, would you share with us now? Thank you. This past Shabbat, as this was happening, synagogues around the world were reading in the Torah how God sent three angels to speak, to approach Abraham. Abraham was facing a little bit of depression because he had just been circumcised and was not able to, and God did not send people his way. And what he had always hoped for, what we recognize Abraham for the most is his hospitality, his opening his tent to everyone else. And when he opens that tent, it gives him an opportunity to speak to people from other places. In this day and age, what we need more than anything else 
is to be able to speak with. Not to speak to, not to talk to, but to speak with. To have a dialogue. You know, we, there's a joke that I'm familiar with, so, but it's also very serious. We have two ears, we have one mouth. Do we know why? Because we should listen twice as much as we speak. And if we listen to what other people have to say, maybe one day we will see peace in our lifetime. And in closing for myself, I would like to say what we always say in the synagogue, he who establishes peace in the heavens, grant peace unto us and unto all Israel and unto all mankind. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our next speaker is Deacon John Macbeth of St. Philip's Baptist Church. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. I just want to add something to my condolences for those who have lost to our, our Jewish brothers and sisters here on Staten Island and those of the interfaith community who actually regularly gather together and spend time with each other in that uh, air of understanding. I want to also warn us against becoming that which we abhor, um, being careful not to uh, harden our own hearts against those who would have even hate against us, that we would continue to even pray for them, that they might see the love that we see from our God and um, from where we gather. We gather every week in various houses of worship, um, <coughs> all across this island, all across the world. But there's one congregation that we all belong to. And there's one tabernacle that we all worship in, and that's this planet Earth. And we are all brothers and sisters under the same planet. And I would welcome anyone who is willing to stand with each other, who is willing to spend time in someone else's shoes to really get an understanding of what they experience. Not so that we can protect ourselves and make and harden ourselves but so that we could actually change this world and fill it with the love that is filled within each of us again i offer condolences and i would ask you to continue to pray for those who have lost as well as for the future of us all amen, amen. i invite forward reverend gary squire of messiah lutheran church I'm going to trade off to my dean. And Reverend Wolfgang Lauder. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I bring you uh, greetings tonight. I, uh, my name is Wolfgang Lauder, and I serve as the pastor at Christ uh, Lutheran Church uh, in Great Kill, Staten Island. I also currently serve as the dean of the eight uh, Lutheran congregations um, of the Metropolitan New York Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I have a message from our bishop, and before I read it, um, before I read this message from the Lutheran Bishop of New York, um, I would like to just say uh, personally and on behalf of the eight congregations in Staten Island uh, to our Jewish uh, siblings in the faith that we stand with you um, in prayer and in um, firm resolve uh, to join hands and hands together as um, one human family. From the Bishop of New York. Joining prayers from our Synod for the Tree of Life community. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Rama, Pittsburgh, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. This verse captures the depth of loss that once again has invaded our lives in a house of worship. We join our prayers for the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh and our Jewish sisters and brothers everywhere. Living with anti-Semitism is a cloud that surrounds 
individuals and families. It is motivated by hate. As a synod, we reach out in love to our neighbors and mourn the hateful shooting in Pittsburgh. Tree of Life is a community of believers that has been active in the life of Pittsburgh social causes and interfaith relations. It was a meeting place for Christian, Jewish, Muslim, and other religious leaders. I often attended, Bishop McCoy says, meetings. He was the former bishop, actually, in Pittsburgh. I often attended, he writes, meetings and gatherings of Tree of Life. Rabbi Emeritus Elvin Birkin was and has remained a valued colleague and friend. Ironically, the last interfaith meeting I attended before leaving Pittsburgh to move to Chicago was a meeting with the press and media about gun violence, and it was held at the Tree of Life. There is so much hate-filled rhetoric in our country and world. We have a voice of love for our neighbors that needs to be expressed in our daily lives and in the statements of our church. Let us pray for those who mourn that God's peace may surround them. And let us be committed to stand shoulder to shoulder with our sisters and brothers of other religious traditions to renounce hate and violence in any form. Shalom, dear friends, in Christ Bishop Donald J. God bless you. Representing the Unitarian Church of Staten Island, Mary Hernandez will be reading a statement from her pastor, Reverend Emily Detar Burt. Reverend Emily was sorry she couldn't be here tonight, so she asked me to read this on her behalf. My heart and the heart of those at the Unitarian Church of Staten Island are breaking at the news of the shooting at the Temple of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. We have seen a rise in voices of hatred and anti-Semitism over the last year, and this hatred has to stop. Hate speech is not free speech, and anti-Semitism is not welcome here. May we, the living interfaith witnesses to this tragedy, continue to lift up our voices of love and support who face this tragedy. And may we never stop fighting against white supremacy and advocate for a world where every Jewish person can pay, pray in peace. Thank you. Bishop Victor Brown, would you share with us now? Good evening to each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters in the faith. My presence here tonight is for a twofold purpose. One, I've come to join in the chorus of solidarity to extend heartfelt condolences and heartfelt sympathy to the victims and the victims' families in Pittsburgh and to the first responders who did not run away from danger but who ran in the direction of danger. Right. My second purpose is to impress upon all of us in the poignant words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King that now is not the time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. It is time for each of us to step into the arena of responsibility and to send a clear message to the present occupant of the Oval Office and to the members of both houses that the words we speak really do matter. The Bible informs us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. 
the rhetoric, the winds of rhetoric that blow out of Washington is a rhetoric that is so divisive that it undermines the very principles upon which this nation was founded. Thank you. Not long ago, we observed the 17th anniversary of 9-11. And I had occasion to speak at several venues. And the profound observation I sought to make was that on that day, 9-11, years ago, when the terrorists attacked this nation, they were not aiming at a black America or a white America right. or Asian American. They were trying to destroy America, right. land of the free, home of the brave. America, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. America, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. It is not enough for us to just exchange sentiments of sympathy. We must move into the arena of responsibility and do something. Mahatma Gandhi said that we must become the change we wish to see. So I want to urge us to exercise our civic responsibility. On November the 7th, we have... All right, November the 6th. November the 6th. You'll be late on the 7th. Well, I'm grateful you're listening to me. On November 6th, we have the opportunity to rewrite the political landscape. Yes! And we can ill afford to sit home and squander an opportunity to make a difference. Do not ever think that your one vote will not count, for it will. But beyond just exercising your civic responsibility, let me encourage us to continue to lend our service and lend our talents and lend our treasure to our places of worship, to our civic organizations, and let us continue to speak out whenever opportunity affords us a chance against bigotry, against hatred, against racism. And let me leave you with these words from the Bible. Do not become weary in well-doing because we will reap if we faint light, if we faint not. Remain vigilant and together we will get through this. God bless you all. Thank you, Bishop. I invite forward now an interfaith minister, Reverend Katie Comiskey, chair of the psychology department at the College of Staten Island. Thank you so much, and thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. I'm wearing a t-shirt that my wife Robin bought me, and it says, America doesn't need to build a wall. America needs to build a giant mirror and reflect on what we've become. And if, <laughs> and if I were to hold a mirror, if I had a mirror up here and I were to hold a mirror and turn it and face you all, I'd be showing you the beauty that I see in front of us. And as I'm standing here and looking out at everyone, I see so many faces that I know and love that I call my friends and my family. So I wanna say thank you for helping me stay strong in these really difficult times 
And I want to say thank you for reaching out to each other and for being a source of strength for us all. And that we will continue to do that for each other as we move through these dark times because we will be the change that we want to see in the world. And I just wanted to quickly share with you a poem thank written you. by Hannah Senish, a Jewish poet and, and hero. And I have to put my glasses on because I'm about that age now. Uh, so she writes, there are stars whose radiance is visible on earth though they have been long extinct. There are people whose brilliance continues to light the world even though they are no longer among the living. These lights are particularly bright when the night is dark. They light the way for humankind. Thank you for being that light. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ed Josie, representing the Staten Island NAACP. Okay, thank you. Uh, this afternoon, our national president, Derek Johnson, sent out a press release and he denounced what happened in the synagogue in Pittsburgh. He's applauded by it and he hopes that justice does prevail. As president of the Staten Island branch of the NAACP, I also denounced the activity that took place in the synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's something that should not have happened. And I had uh, a lot of sadness in my heart when that happened because I thought we had been making progress in this country, but I see that we have taken a step backwards. Throughout history, there's been a lot of injustice to a lot of people. And what happened should have happened. We're all children of God, whoever God might be, we're created equally. We have the same blood in our veins. If you need blood, you don't ask where the blood came from. You want blood to help cure your medical problems. So therefore, you don't argue about that. So why should we hold whatever the issue might be against somebody from a different ethnic background? I was somewhat discouraged, but yet I do feel that in the long run, justice will prevail, so I don't feel really dejected about what happened. I do have faith that people are good people, basically, and they will see this thing through, and justice will prevail, and we will get back on the right track. And uh, basically speaking, NACP does not condone this type of activity, and they would like to see justice prevail for everybody in this country. Thank you. I invite forward Bonnie Ferrando of Arden Heights Boulevard Center. Sorry, I didn't realize you were gonna ask me to speak. Um, and everybody speaks so eloquently. And all I can really say is, I'm the president of Arden Heights Boulevard Jewish Center, Congregation Eitz Chaim, which is the Tree of Life. Um, and more important than my role as president, I teach the Sunday school. And today, one of the students came and he hadn't had a Hebrew name, so he chose his Hebrew name and his name is Shalom. So I think it's appropriate and let there be peace for all of us. Thank you. I invite now to speak Rabbi Judah Neuberger. I truly wish that there was no need for such gatherings. A year ago summer, we had a vigil for the barbarism that took place Chancellorsville, in Charlottesville, rather. And one innocent life was lost. This past summer, my wife and I happened to, to go to Japan, something we wanted to do for quite a few years. And there was what we call a righteous among the nations, a Japanese person during World War II who was in charge of the consulate in Vilnius, Lithuania. His name was Sugihara. 
and he was responsible for saving thousands of Jewish lives. And we visited a memorial to him in Japan. And I looked at the exhibit. Many of the pictures in the exhibit consisted of pictures that I was so familiar with from the Holocaust. Classics, if you will. From the Warsaw Ghetto uprising. Jews being forced to dig their own grave prior to being shot. And then a Japanese young man came over to me and he began to interview me about the exhibit. And I suddenly felt so overcome with emotion seeing these pictures in such unfamiliar surroundings somehow made me see them anew. And I experienced the anguish of the Holocaust. And for a minute or so, I just could not speak. And then when I spoke, I spoke. In praise of what I called an ornament of humanity who extended himself in the midst of the depths of hell to save a people just because they were human beings. How strange it is here in America that we come together to commemorate a massacre of Jews. America has never known a massacre of Jews. It's not as <coughs> if America has been free of what is politely termed, and I use these words advisedly, anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is a phrase coined by a Jew hater, a German Jew hater in the late 19th century, who tried to give a scientific veneer to the hatred of the Jews. And so coined this ridiculous term, anti-Semitism. It is by any other name what it is, the hatred of the Jews. A mystery that confounds and haunts Western civilization well nigh into 2,000 years. In World War II, America was an anti-Semitic country. That is why only 900 Jews were admitted into this country during the course of the Holocaust, when millions were seeking to get out from the gates of hell. It's only in the post-war period that America has come to some kind of reckoning with the poison that it imbibed, both in terms of racial hatred ethnic hatred and the religious hatred that tragically underlines the hatred of the Jews. My dear people, the Jewish people is the canary in the, in the mine. If things go badly for the Jews, it means we're all in trouble. We've only given you the greatest gifts that you have the belief in one God, the Bible that you quote, the understanding that every single human life is sacred, is kadosh, and that when you violate the sanctity of one, you violate the sanctity, the meaning, the grace, the certitude, the act of creation that God visited upon us all. When we gather here, good people, we're not only praying for the souls of those 11 innocents, innocent Jews, who were killed on a Shabbat morning only because they are Jews. We're praying for all of us, for all of our souls, 
beginning with the soul of the inhabitant of the White House who is raking dangerous coals. If you play with fire, you will be burned. Amen. There is no way to contain those noxious fumes. Understand, understand, O oh, occupant of the Oval Office, who is privileged to have the greatest responsibility of any human being on earth. Yes, you can, as we say, kvell in your three Jewish grandchildren, but if you send out dog whistles to haters, then we're all lost. Dear people, bottom line, America has got to not only survive, it's got to thrive. We are the best and greatest hope of the world. There is nothing to replace America the beautiful. And if we're ugly for the time being, you know what to do. Now representing Temple Israel, I invite forward Judy Schur. Students of Temple Israel and our wonderful Rabbi Michael Howe, who couldn't be here this evening. He's in California at the reunion of his wife's law school. Uh, I send his prayers to you, uh, to the whole Staten Island community. And Temple Israel has always been a leader as a reform movement in uh, reaching out to other faith communities and the underserved. And uh, Rabbi Hal continues our work in that area. And the hope is that what happened this weekend will not deter us or any of you from continuing to build bridges with one another. Thank you. going to transition into a time of singing together songs of hope. So Pastor Matt Schaefer from Bethel Methodist Church will lead us in a song. Uh, thank you. Um, this is a song um, it, that uh, it's from uh, African American roots and uh, it was a, a song of the protest that also refers to scripture uh, in the, uh, the psalmist writes uh, that uh, like a tree planted by water. And um, we are like that tree. The, the, uh, the water that we are planted near is the spirit of the living God. Uh, it strengthens our souls and it guides us in principles of love and peace and courage as we stand up. Um, so, many, uh, so many people in this country are, are struggling, um, are marginalized in this country and are bullied. Uh, by uh, by people who represent what they believe to be the majority. Uh, and uh, this is a song called I Shall Not Be Moved. Uh, there are uh, different words to this. There's no consensus on what the words are, but uh, it starts off with I Shall Not Be Moved. And I'd like you to sing with this if you can. It's a very simple song. So the first verse will go, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. You can remember the second verse. I'm, I'm making this up, but um, I'd like the second verse to be, uh, love shall be my guiding light, and I shall not be moved. The third verse, I'd like to make it, uh, peace shall rule my heart and mind, and I shall not be moved. Let's see if we can remember this. I, I'll see if I can remember this. Uh, someone want to take this, though? Thank you. So let's try this.
introduce Reverend Melody Batari of Olivet Pres Presbyterian Church. Grace and peace to all of you, and on behalf of Olivet Presbyterian Church, we just extend our condolences and our prayers and our thoughts to all our brothers and sisters in all this earth. Our Jewish brothers and sisters mean so much to us. And I, for one, just want to say two very important things. I will not be that pastor that goes into the pulpit on Sunday and does not speak out against the injustices happening in our world. I will not be that pastor that speaks that all is well That's right. when outside the doors people are being murdered because of the, the color of their skin or their, their religious background. I will not be that pastor. And I pray that each one of us will speak up and speak out on behalf of each other as human beings. As Rabbi Judah said, we must care for each other as human beings. The second thing is I just want to offer an invitation on behalf of the Building Bridges Coalition being hosted by the Amazing Grace Ministries at Olivet Presbyterian Church. We are having a Thanksgiving worship service on Sunday, November 18th. Uh, at Olivet at seven o'clock. All are welcome as we will join together in gratitude for each other. Amen. Amen. And our final speaker before our call to action is our assemblyman, Matthew Titone. Thank, uh, thank you so much. Um, what a difficult, difficult uh, day today is. I tweeted earlier this morning that there's no amount of hate, there's no amount of violence that can shake our foundations of faith. And I'm thankful today. I'm grateful today. I'm thankful for the 11 lives that were lost because even though I don't know them, I know that they must have been good people and that they touched so many lives. I'm thankful today for my community, for my pastors here today for bringing us all comfort. I'm thankful for each and every one of you who I know has a very, very strong voice, a powerful voice. And I'm thankful to know that you will use that voice to say enough is enough. I know you will use your voice not only on social media or at work or on the ball field, but at the polling place. Yes. Yes. I'm thankful that we have elected officials who also speak with you, enough is enough. I'm thankful that we have no, uh, uh, people running for office who will be our voice and say enough is enough. I'm thankful for today, as difficult as today is, I'm thankful because the foundation of my faith in my God, in my community, in you, will not be dismantled or destroyed by an act of violence. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. November 6th, use your voice. Except use it on November 7th if you're voting for the other guy. <laughs> Thank you all for making uh, this community a great, fantastic community. for any tenant of Christianity, any word, any teaching, 
anything that influenced this mass murderer yesterday or anyone else that holds the belief that Jews must be eliminated. It's there, it's in our churches, no matter how hard we try to make it go away. And it goes back for centuries upon centuries upon centuries. And so I want to share three brief stories that come out of yesterday into today to look for the threads that I think we need to look for in moving forward to prevent this from happening again. The first is when I was in church from 10 to 2 o'clock yesterday and the first thing I did was get on the Facebook as I drove out of the parking lot, which you're not supposed to do when you're driving. <laughs> and I, I read the Clarion Ledger out of Mississippi. I don't read the news that comes from CNN. But Jerry Mitchell is a civil rights uh, uh, reporter. And his opening line said, and this man, Mr. Bowers, is potentially related to an imperial grand wizard named Mr. Bowers, from the, uh, who may be responsible for the shooting, mass, mass shooting in Pittsburgh. I was like, mass shooting in Pittsburgh? Is this a piece of history? Did I miss something? Mm -hmm. So I pulled over and I Googled mass shooting in Pittsburgh and read what had happened. This man, Mr. Bowers, had posted on his uh, internet two hours before the shooting his dismay for a Jewish agency in Maryland that works with refugees and and, 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 and wrote vehemently against the work of refugees and the caravan. This morning at 4 a.m., I was on a Facebook thread with someone I, I, I went to college with in Maryland, and all these people from Maryland talking about an invasion happening in our country. I didn't know what they were talking about until I kept scrolling down, and then I got into it and was battling back and forth for a good hour of people thinking that there's an invasion coming. These are, these are graduates of Loyola College, Baltimore, Maryland. Today after church, after we prayed, we, we, we spoke, spoke about the incident, the mass shooting, and, 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 and talked about conversion of our own Christian faith and realization of the power of the religious symbols that we hold and carry and, and think we have in our head and in our hearts. At coffee hour, a man said, well, you didn't pray for the protection of our country. And I thought, well, I think it was in there somewhere, but he said, no, no, protection from the invasion. I said, what invasion? This man is the most helpful, kindest, most gracious Christian in my congregation that will do anything for you. And he actually believes that our country is being invaded. And I sat him down at coffee hour and I did my best to straighten him out. But if a person that gracious in his faith believes that we're being invaded, imagine what is in the minds of other people who are not as gracious, as kind and gentle hearted. And we have to be aware of that. We can change Staten Island so that this doesn't happen on Staten Island. I'm sorry to say that I wasn't surprised about yesterday because you see signs of bad things happening to people and particularly to people of color and to Jewish people over the last couple of years. But we have the power to change it from this day on to be sure it doesn't happen on Staten Island. And what that requires is a tremendous amount of grassroots effort dedicated to building relationship and educating people from two feet up. I don't know what the civil rights education curriculum is in the schools, but we need to know what that is, and we need to be sure that civil rights education includes education about anti-Semitism or whatever word, Judah, you want to use. We have got to be sure that we are talking about this and that this is institutionalized conversation, structuralized conversation in our congregations. Yes. On an ongoing basis, this is not one sermon. 
This is, we must talk about this because, and I speak to the Gentiles here, being Christian is about changing this and not letting this happen. If we don't do this, we are not living out what it is that we believe as Christians. And that's really important. This is integral to our message. This is not a public service announcement of being kind to others. Amen. So we have to figure out a way how to do that. And for the people that aren't in congregations learning on the weekends, we need to figure out how to get it into our community boards, into our neighborhood area committees, into our civic associations, into our service organizations, so that it becomes a repeated theme and that we build relationship. After what happened in Charleston, a small group of clergy took the friendship dinners that we did for five years here in Port Richmond to build relationships between black people, white people, and brown people in this community, island-wide. And we're in churches every month, but it's the same people talking to each other That's right. because it's really hard to get 24 people out on a Sunday evening. We got to do it. We got to shut off the tube and we got to grab somebody who's never been to a dinner before and had never sat down with a Jewish person, has never met a Muslim, has never broken bread with an African American person and then sit down and bring them into the picture. That's the only way that we're going to break the chains that bind us and separate us. So you need to pick up the torch in a very strong way and make sure that that education happens on an ongoing basis. Marit, the, 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 uh, the assassination of Marit Saad, written by Peter Weiss, says, people believe what they hear over and over again. Yeah, that's, right. that's how we get people to church on Sunday. People believe what they hear over and over again. Let's make sure that people are believing the truth about what it means to be brothers and sisters. The education has to be ongoing, and it has to not just start from the children up. It's got to start with the adults in our community as well. So everybody responded here to a blast on Facebook because there was no other way to get this word out. The same blast will go out for a follow-up meeting. The people that are here tonight, we should double the number of people that come to a follow-up meeting, and we need to commit to get done what needs to get done so that we can build a community that is safe for everybody and that honors the sacredness of human life in everybody and that acknowledges the presence of God in everybody. That is the task of our Christian faith. That is the task that is before us as a human rights issue and that's the only thing that's gonna save people from the suffering that occurred yesterday. To honor the lives of the people that died, we must prevent death. We are here together and we've heard much and what we take home from this is should be the resolve to go further, to fight hatred, to spread love and to do particularly to stand against anti-Semitism and racism wherever we may find it. Also I want to thank of course the the members of the New York City Police Department who've been keeping us safe and circling around. And those of the Shomrim Society who were here earlier, uh, to Reverend Karen Jackson, uh, who did a lot of the organizing of this program, and to uh, Terry Troya, who called it into being, as well as all the speakers and everyone who was here. And also my wife, Bonnie, who is putting all of this on Facebook Live. So the whole program is on Facebook Live. And they should share it. What? They and you should share, share it. it. Yeah. Share it and send it around so people know what we did here today. I'd like to conclude with a prayer, and that is the traditional Jewish prayer that is said uh, for those who have passed on the Kaddish, the sanctification. But if you look at the words of the prayer and hear them, you'll see it's not a prayer really about death, it's about life, and it's about hope, and it's about love. So first, I'll, I will we'll say the prayer, the 
together, those who perhaps know it and others can listen to it in its original. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shmei rabah b'almad ivrach hirutei v'amlich malchutei v'chaye echor v'yom echor v'chaye lichol v'yit Yisrael v'agala u'vizman kari v'emeru amei yehei shmei rabah mevorach li'olam olomei omaya yit barach v'yishtavach v'yitorar v'yitramam v'yitnaser Vita dar, vita ler, vita lal, shmei de kucha brihu. Le ela min ko bir hata de shirata, tush bir hata de nechemata, damiran de alma, imeru. Amen. Ye he shlama rabba min shemaya de chai molein de alkohol israel, imeru. Amen. O se shalom bim rama. Who ya se shalom, Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'imiru. Amen. Glorified and sanctified be God's great name throughout the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom in your lifetime and during your days and within the life of the entire house of Israel speedily and soon and say, Amen. Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed and praised and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, adored, and lauded. Be the name of the Holy One, blessed be he. Beyond all blessings and hymns and praises and consolations that are ever spoken in the world. And let us say, Amen. Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and light for us and for all Israel and for all the world. And let us say amen. amen. May he who makes peace in the, less, in the celestial heights, may he make peace for us, for Israel and for all humanity. And let us say amen. amen. Now uh, Michael Serrata will sing a, a song for us, Misha Beirach. And this is said as a prayer for healing. And we pray that we are healed, that those who were injured in this incident find healing, but that the wounds that divide our country and the wounds that cause so much, so many of us to be broken people be healed as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is by Debbie Friedman, Misha Berach. Anyone who knows the song, welcome to join in. Misha Berach, Avoteinu, Ol Habracha, Leavoteinu. May the source of strength who bless the ones before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let us say, Amen. There are some cookies in the social hall next door, which is upstairs. <laughs> our candlelight vigil has concluded, but our work in the world has not. 
So may you go forth from here to be God's agents of peace and a light in the darkness. Amen. 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 Amen.